Hello, my name is Dennis Legear. I'll be teaching at FDIC 2024 uh, workshop both on Monday and Tuesday. I'll have co-instructors Rick Mosier from Olathe, Kansas and Taylor Goodman from Powhatan, Virginia. We're going to be focusing on a class called Water Delivery Focused Engine Design. We want to make the water delivery spec and layout wise be as easy as possible. So we're just going to break the pumper into these key components. Uh, the front bumper, for example, pros and cons of front suctions, uh, pros and cons of having structural interior hand lines off the front bumper or only exterior water hand lines or a combination. What can you actually get done with a front bumper? What's available? Different options out there. Moving towards the pump panel, which is the heart of the controls of the rig. Everybody's seen a pump panel and they go like, oh man, it's laid out so well. What makes a good well laid out pump panel. Some of the things are spec and layout based. If you have 13 or 14 or 15 discharges, you know, the gauges are gonna be small. If you uh, have a 600 PSI gauge, you're gonna need readers. Uh, maybe you should spec a 400 PSI gauge. If you're doing a foam system, how many discharges do you want to have foam on them? What are the implications of the size of the foam loop? What are some implications around pressure pickups and the way the plumbing is laid out inside, right? How do we make this pump panel easy to negotiate day, night, rain, sleet, snow, all the bad conditions and have it work well, right? Uh, crossways, you can do a complete dead bed here. All of them can be dead. Some of them can be pre-connected. Some can be pre-connected and you can have a dead bed like this engine here, right? What's the pros and cons? Running board storage, do you want a booster back at three inch? Do you want an autofill system for your tank? There's all sorts of things that we need to discuss here, right? Moving, moving on here, this engine, they happen to reverse engine the engineer's door. There are pros and cons of this. What kind of equipment should be in here? What makes it uh, laid out properly? Should you do a bifold? Should you do a roll up? What are things, that, what surfaces can you write on? Right, moving to the rear of the rig, the hose bed, which is really the heart of suppression on an engine, we have supply and attack options off there, or we can go to all the attack and supply options. You know, some fire departments put a couple pre-connects back here, a couple dead beds back here, and their supply hose, and it's a smorgasbord of extinguishment. They can do their RAM monitor or mini monitor, a static bed of two and a half, a pre-connected two and a half, a static bed of inch and three quarter, a pre-connected inch and three quarter. So that is an option. You know, some departments put ladders through here. What's the pros and cons of that? What's the proper size hose bed? Is it 68 inches wide, 60 inches wide? What's the lay flat width? What's the stack height of different specs of hose? Where do you get in trouble? Is you know, this is obviously spec thicker than quarter inch, and they're nice and stiff the fire department paid attention to something they definitely wanted here. You know, where is your standpipe equipment? Where is your other suppression equipment? This happens to have a wildland uh, risk in their first due. So you have this wildland hose to deploy, right? So we're going to be looking at all of these things in detail in a way where it's lower easier and better to deploy so your first water at or near the seat is as quick as possible it's easy to load it's easy to use it's ergonomic and it focuses on the life-saving potential and property preserving potential of the fire engine